Well, good morning. The boat is still in the water, and I am just getting ready to uh, check something out. When we were down here the other day, uh, on Wednesday when the boat was launched, I filled the fresh water uh, tank and was just flushing the system, and then heard that there was it was an off sound, that, and there was a lot of sp um, sputtering and splashing coming through the system. So I opened the hatch, the engine hatch, and looked at the water pump to discover it is leaking. Now, I don't know if it's the water pump itself that's leaking or just a fitting or who knows what's going on. So I, it was getting to be nine o'clock already. I had had my fill of work uh, for that day, so I just call it quits. Now I did pick up a new water pump, a three and a half gallon per minute Japsco uh, um, pump, which is very similar to the existing 3.3 flow jet that we have there now. So I'm going to pop the hatch, go down there with more light and investigate and if I have to I will swap out that pump and show you what it looks like. Oh by the way did I mention it's only nine degrees Celsius today? Yes the boat is still messy messy messy. been draining out there. So I got my handy dandy trouble light. There's the new pump if I need it. I'll throw that in. But of course as every as with everything on this boat and down the engine room at least anyways um, <laughs> apart from these twin big blocks that are jammed in here uh, nothing is easy to get at and the water pump is back there so I gotta climb down into that corner to reach that way so wish me luck okay let's throw the light on watch my step show you what I'm after here or sorry at least what I'm up against so the water pump is there I don't know if you can see where let's get the light out of the way water is leaking right around that fitting there you can see the water is leaking right around that fitting so again i'm not sure if it's the fitting or maybe just the gasket on the uh where that clamps on because if you guys are familiar with these things they just have a quick release and that thing will just drop away but that looks kind of homemade that whole fitting so it could be right in there as well anyways i'm gonna dig into it see what i find Okay, I do believe I've isolated the problem, he said, from this echoey chamber. Water pump, line out, line in. That line in, this piece, would have come with the pump, this little guy right here, and that just, that goes in, and then there's a quick release pin that slides across to lock it in. And that's what I thought had failed, or the pump itself. And you see then that is the line that comes from the uh, holding tank, the water, fr uh, fresh water holding tank. <laughs> so as is typical on this vessel, somebody has done some half-ass jury rig connection from that hose to that pump. And the issue is, after lots of looking at all the lines, I think where's air coming from in that line? Why is the pump not shutting off? You can see that fitting there, which is a female to female connection. So this screws into that. My first clue was that you shouldn't be able to loosen this by hand. This should be tight enough. Get rid of that. And then this piece, which should be a barbed uh, fitting, that goes in to just hold on okay and that screws onto there right to make the make that connection all the way through but the issue is my friends that for some reason this brass fitting has cracked never seen anything like it all the way through from one end to the other I know that because when the fittings were on, I could actually see the white Teflon tape. 
through there. So off to the hardware store. Okay, so that is my solution. That's what I was able to get at the uh, local hardware store lumber yard. And these are the two pieces that replaces that. And it's a barb fitting, so it'll be a lot more tight. And that is the uh, female, female um, piece there, which is clearly split right down there. So anyways, galvanized, it's all they had. I would have preferred brass, but galvanized, it's made for water systems and it is labeled as lead free so it should be all good so just slide that back over the hose clamp it off and this will just go in and lock in place we'll fire it up okay so there is my elegant solution and it's all good the water's on um i, I bled the system i got rid of the air obviously it was introducing air in that split and that's why the water was spitting so much so it's all nice nice now the only thing is, because of that elbow piece, and these fittings are a little bit longer, it's just bringing the hose out this way. Yes, I could have cut the hose, but I chose not to, just in case this ever had to be swapped out. Um, I didn't want to run out of hose, and I didn't want to have, to have to add extra hose and put another coupling in there and blah, blah, blah. So it's just bending around here, which is bringing it really close to the transmission, the front end transmission. So I had a little piece of extra hose you can see i split it and wrap around it as chafe protection i'm just going to run and grab a uh, zip tie put that on and it should be all good man so that's great now i can return that other water tank or sorry water pump and get my money back now one more thing while i'm down here it's just something to consider for yourself in the spring since i'm down here anyways and i've got my 5 sixteenths I just give everything whoop, just a tidy, tidy turn. I've already done these ones, but just it's a it's a good practice at the beginning of the season. And the reason I'm bringing this up on our last boat, our 400, we had the same setup, um, straight shaft drives, but same same closed cooling big blocks. Uh, these Merc Cruiser Blue Waters, and this is the heat exchanger for the transmission. So you can see the line coming in there and boom, boom, boom. So this is fresh, like seawater that's running through here to cool the transmission lines. And what had happened was we were out for the first time in the spring on that boat for a little voyage and we're crossing the lake and all of a sudden things didn't sound right. Bilge hump come on. Um, long story short, one of these clamps had come off or it was loose. So one of these lines had popped right off. And now we're doing, you know, 2500 rpm 2200 whatever so that's a lot of water pumping down into the bilge um obviously i shut that engine off and just reclamped it and cleaned out the water and that was good but that's something that could potentially sink a boat fast if your bilge pumps can't keep up and i doubt the bilge pumps could keep up with the amount of water that your engines are going to be pumping down into here so just as a good practice just give everything a little oop just make sure everything's gluten tight like snug anyways i mean don't reef it too much and start cutting into the hose but i try, try to do that every spring just go around and give everything make sure it's all good so i am all happy about that and as much as i like to be <laughs> compressed down into this engine room i have one more thing to do just uh, make sure the pump is primed for the air conditioner slash heat and then um, that's it. I'm going to close up shop and then we can clean up and get ready to spend the first night on the boat this year. So that's it. I hope you learned something from my do it, did it myself project. Not did it yourself, did it myself. That's how I did it. And I hope you learned something. Hope you appreciate that. Okay, thanks. Cheers.